What happens? I've got my cowboy hat on, so I'm a cowboy. Let's say that. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm involved. Uh, it's about me, but um, they stay where they stay. Dak Prescott with the cowboy hat. He's got the star on the helmet. Still a member of the Dallas Cowboys under contract for one more year. They're not going to let him get him away next year. They'll use the franchise tag at least once or twice if it comes to that. But, Shereen, one of the big questions in Dallas continues to be, will they get this contract worked out? Last week it was the Carson Wentz deal, and that sparked some reporting from Clarence Hill regarding the notion that maybe Dak Prescott's agents want $34 million a year for Prescott, and I don't think that's all that unreasonable of a number, especially when we talk about a new money analysis, because when you look at the full contract, it would be about $27.6 million per year on a five-year deal. If it's a four-year extension worth $34 million per season, puts him in line with Jimmy Garoppolo and Kirk Cousins, he's better than both of those guys. He's accomplished plenty. He's played in every game that his team has had. There's something to be said for the durability. He's been to the playoffs twice. He's won a playoff game. I thought he looked very good in that game against the Rams, even when the running game wasn't there. Usually the running game has to be there for Prescott to be there. That was one of those occasions where I saw Prescott play well without the running game playing well. So I think the arrow's pointing up for Prescott. I just, I, I, you know, I just feel like the Cowboys hold over him and really anyone else who they're negotiating with the idea of playing for the Cowboys, and they expect people to recognize there's an inherent value to that and to take less money in order to continue to play for the Cowboys. The Cowboys have always gotten deals done that they've wanted to get done. And I believe, as Jerry Jones believes, that they're going to get this deal done. But I think this is the hardest deal they've ever had to do. And they are looking at that salary cap. And they are looking at the fact that they have to pay Amari Cooper and Ezekiel Elliott. And Byron Jones perhaps leaves because they don't have money to pay him. And Jalen Smith's going to come up in another year from now. So they've got all these players they're going to have to pay if they're going to keep this team together. This is one of the best young teams on paper in football. But to keep them together, you're going to have to find a way to fit all those guys under the cap. And it's going to be really, really hard. And Stephen Jones has talked about that, that team friendly deal and I just don't know if they're going to be able to or how they're going to be able to do that and get it done uh, with Dak but I'm with you I don't think that price tag based on new money is unrealistic it's what the market bears and you want to keep this guy you think he's your franchise quarterback that's what it's going to take to keep him yeah agents love the new money analysis because it makes the deals look better than they otherwise would look but a guy like Dak Prescott loses out when you obsess over new money because he's only due to make $2 million this year. So that $34 million per year, when you throw the $2 million that he's due to make this year, it does drag the full average down to $27.6 million, which isn't nearly as impressive as thirty four. million. And I think it makes it harder for the Cowboys to justify getting to a $27.6 million contract on a five-year average because maybe they don't want to be tied to the idea that they're making him such a highly paid quarterback and that may cause others to want more money than maybe they'd want to pay. I mean, you have to balance it out just right. And that's where the New England Patriots benefit from having a quarterback who consistently doesn't try to blow out his potential earnings and create havoc for other positions on the team. Because what happens is you eventually have a bunch of highly paid players and then you can't afford the depth. And when someone gets injured, you're pressing into service an undrafted rookie who may or may not perform, as opposed to having two or three million you can spend on a veteran backup who used to be a starter somewhere else who can come in and play and you don't have to worry about that spot. And, and the Cowboys are inching toward that territory with all of these star players they have to pay. And, and Dak is the one who's going to command the most. And it's quarterback position. It should command the most. Dak's quote, my favorite quote that he's had throughout this whole contract issue was when he said somebody brought up Tom Brady and he said, yeah, but I don't have a wife who's a supermodel who makes more than I do. And that's true. And it's a it's a great point. And I don't think he's going to settle for a team friendly deal in the way the Cowboys want him to settle for a team friendly deal. And and they're going to have to figure out how to get this thing done. And maybe it's at the expense of Ezekiel Elliott. Maybe 
maybe it's to the expense of, of Byron Jones and some of these players that they would love to keep that they're going to have to let walk. But the good for, thing for them is they have drafted over the last few years since Will McClay became involved heavily uh, in the front office. They have drafted extremely well, and so that's going to help them if they had, do have to let some of these players walk away. They're going to be better off. Yeah, I think Dak Prescott more important to the Cowboys than Ezekiel Elliott, even though Elliott is the guy who, who really emerged and helped give that offense the, the kind of kick that it needed to make it easier for Prescott to do what he needs to do. It's easier to find another Ezekiel Elliott than it is to find another Dak Prescott. And I know Michael Irvin's been very passionate about this in his comments to the media that you've got a great quarterback in Dak Prescott. You don't let him go. You find a way to keep him around. Now, Tony Romo would always take less than maybe he could have gotten. He never tried to push it to the limit. I feel like Dak is more inclined to push it to the limit, and Dak isn't listening to the idea that, hey, you're the Cowboys quarterback. You're going to sell more jerseys and make more money that way. You're going to have sponsorship deals that wouldn't be available to you if you were the Jaguars quarterback. You're going to have a broadcasting career waiting for you when you're done, like a Tony Romo, a Jason Witten, a Troy Aikman, because you were the Cowboys quarterback. I, I think that between Prescott and his agent, they don't care. He's got value as a quarterback. Other teams are paying. The Cowboys should pay. And this concept of a team-friendly deal, I just don't think that the team is going to get that. And the question is, will they blink and pay Prescott what he wants, or would they dare to run the risk of not having Dak Prescott and trying to find another quarterback somewhere else? I, I, I just think, Shereen, they're going to do whatever they have to do to keep him. Oh, no question. And, you know, Jerry, one of his favorite lines is, I don't have enough time to have a bad time. And uh, you look at his age and the fact that he does want to win another Super Bowl before he dies, how long it's been since this team has won. 1995 was the last time they even went to the championship game when they won the franchise's fifth Super Bowl. And it's it's been a really long time. And, and Jerry knows that his window is open now, but it may not be open for uh, who knows how much much longer so he wants to win now and the way to do that yeah, is with Dak Prescott rather than going out and trying to find a quarterback they tried that after Troy Aikman and it took forever before they lucked into Tony Romo and finally found Tony Romo and now they've lucked into Dak Prescott and they haven't had to have that waiting period for a quarterback they will pay him they will keep him it may be at the expense of some other players including Ezekiel Elliott and Byron Jones Hey, you know what they may have to do is just let him earn $2 million this year as uh, the, the fourth year on a fourth-round contract and then franchise tag him in 2020, franchise tag him again in 2021, and at some point they're going to have to pay him. The problem is the longer you wait to pay him, the more expensive it's going to be because other guys are going to be paid. Now is the time to do it. And right now, of all the guys out there who are eligible for second contracts at the quarterback position, now we know Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston – they deliberately haven't gotten their second contracts because the teams don't know whether or not they want them to be around beyond this year. But Dak Prescott and Jared Goff are the only other two young quarterbacks out there who are in that spot where they could get a new contract. Their teams, I believe, want to keep them around. They've made that decision. This is the guy. The question is, when do you do the deal? And it will get more expensive the longer you wait. Whatever that number is now for Dak Prescott, it's going to be higher next year. And the only way it gets lower is if he gets injured or if he just has a dramatic drop in his play. And I think we've seen enough from him in three seasons to believe that he, he will only get better and he won't get significantly worse. And, and Shereen, look, I don't know what this new offense is going to do for him. I don't know how much better the offense is going to be. But, you know, you look at a Dak Prescott and you wonder how much better he would have been over the last three years if he was in an offense that is a little more diverse, a little more imaginative, a little more unpredictable in what they're going to do at any given moment, maybe his numbers would be much better than they've been through three seasons. Well, and the fact that he only had Amari Cooper for nine games as well, Des Bryant was at the end of his career when Dak had him, and he finally now has a feature receiver, a guy who can make plays and you trust can make plays. You're going to get the ball to him in any circumstance. Uh, and you saw his yards per attempt rise in the nine games that he had Amari Cooper significantly rise in those nine games. And I think those two are only going to get better. They had a 
great off season together. They figured some things out together, uh, and and it snapped right away for Amari. But I think he's going to be even better in this offense uh, this season than he was in those nine games last year when he had to learn on the fly. And it, the interesting part, obviously, for the Cowboys is Kellen Moore. What's he going to add to this offense? How is he going to change things? How's the offense going to be different? Uh, and and that's to be determined. And I don't even know if we're going to know that in, in the preseason, but we're going to see it a little bit. But I saw a lot more motion out of the Cowboys and some different things that they did moving players around uh, in the offseason workouts. So I do think that's going to be a significant difference for this team. And Amari Cooper, another one of the Cowboys that needs to get paid at some point. And by the way, we're scheduled to talk to Amari Cooper on Monday. He's doing some work on behalf of Gatorade. So we'll get a chance to ask Amari Cooper about how things are going in Dallas and whether he thinks he will have that new contract in place when the regular season begins. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.